Hi there everyone, this is Pedro Fernandez and welcome to this tutorial from rt9.com and as you can see today I'm bringing to you a scene that we've actually worked on in the past and I wanted to show you exactly how to insert people into an architectural scene. Uh, people play an important role in architecture and especially in these architectural visualizations. They give scale, they give composition and they kind of embrace a whole kind of feeling and emotion to the scene and as you can see at the moment on screen I've brought out one of the latest ones we did work on and I wanted to show you just how important it is if we just remove all these people and give you the raw feeling of this image and as you can see I mean it's there but it's not much and there's not much going on so what I wanted to show you is exactly how I looked at it and how I wanted to compose it and you can see this within, I mean, within various artists and the way they use people. And one of the ones that actually sprang up to mind was uh, Velázquez and Las Meninas. And what happens is, if you look at this, the people in this are telling a story. We've got lots going on. We've got the light coming in on the right, just lighting up the faces. We've got heaps of little stories that just go around. We've got a little girl playing with a dog. We've got the guy at the back. We've got these two within the picture. And he's used people as his main composition in this. All the rest is kind of, well, I wouldn't say accessory, but the importance is gathered within the people and the people used. And that's a bit of what we're trying to create here. And if you have a look at the moment at our picture without any people whatsoever, you can see that there's not much going on. And one of the main things I really wanted to create was actually to, to bring out a, a composition where we have our eye kind of just perspective at itself, if you can say that, and just kind of build up some, just some points where we have our eye stopping, generally in the rules of thirds, and also bring some composition and depth to the space. And this is kind of already bringing out what happened, and I was doing this without really noticing. Over time, you just gain, the more you look at things, the more you start to analyze things, the more you look at photography, the world itself. You start to see patterns and ways of composing things. And you really start to see this in your own work. And you'll see if today you're not the best, just keep at it and I'm sure you get there. But also, it's important to know that techniques are just a part of it and not really the end result. So it's just important to keep practicing, not give up and just keep going for it. So okay, so let's insert our people. And at the moment, I'm just going to show you one of them and just the basic process of how you can go through this. So I found a, a person online, just a, a scooter, and I thought this would work really well if we just brought it here. And it just would pop out and look really well and give a kind of, uh, a kind of just compositionally look really good and just break it up a little bit and have our eye just follow through the space, just as our previous uh, drawing. So I'll take that off and I'll show you exactly how we can cut out these people which I've just pasted in from, from an online website. So generally I'll just hit the P tool and I'll just come around and kind of just there's yeah around it. I'm not going to go too much into detail because there are a lot of, uh, of great tutorials and, and you can just search for them very quickly but this is basically the main kind of processes. We're going penning around, you can brush around, and then what we'll do is create a mask. Masks are really important because what they do is they let us work in a non-destructive way. And a non-destructive way means basically that we have all our information there and if we want to change in the future we can change. So I've done this quite roughly just to show you. So we have our P tool, I can just right click and let's make selection and that doesn't actually pop up on screen but here we go and I've made the selection and I'll just delete that and just create a mask down here so we have our mask now if I just hit the B tool for brush and as you can see I'm, I'm not I, I'm not best at actually using uh, shortcuts but there are a couple that I do use and B is one of them so I bring up my, my brush and I just start to paint around. And I'm doing this really, really roughly. I mean, I'm just doing this uh, 
to show you. So I'm painting around and if I still want to get a little more out, I just flip around the colors to light and use X for that. And I'm just bringing in more info. So basically I've already prepared uh, a cutout of which I've already scaled. So we have our cutout and as you can see it's kind of sticking out and it's uh, the main focal point if you look at it at the moment how it is. So what we need to do is actually correct firstly its values and then color grade it and then add the minor details that just make it look really good. Uh, so basically let's look at values. So I'm going to create here a black and white filter. So let's just go to black and white and that will just change the whole image to black and white. And let me unplug these ones, which I already have done, and put a levels, create a levels layer, and just attach that levels layer, and bring out the white point. So there you go. I'm lifting the white point already. That's already making much more sense. And generally what happens is, in um, atmospheric perspective, we have what's closer to us with deeper blacks, higher contrast. So as you can see, contrast between white and black is quite heavy and the blacks are getting much blacker as they are closer to us as they drift off into the distance I mean just looking at these guys you can see that the blacks now have some tonality to them they have some shape and we've just lifted up that black point a little bit more towards the whites so I'm going to continue on correcting it and I think that's pretty much there I can even do that yeah, that looks good. So now our values are right, but what else do we need? We need our colors, and I'll, I'm quite sure that this is a bit too red. So what I will do is basically just use a color balance. And I used a hue saturation there, but I think color balance could have actually been better. Because color balance, I'm taking out a bit of the readiness, and we had a bit too much red. And I think that's already looking really good. So what we need now is actually the little shadows behind it. And the shadows below it, sorry, the shadows below, uh, they kind of, we have a contact shadow, as you can see in this photo. We have contact shadows, and we have just this, uh, this ambient diffuse shadow that comes out from the, the soft light. So where it contacts, it kind of just grounds it. So firstly, we're going to do the main diffuse shadow. And I'm just going to control T to transform. I've just copied down, sorry. So you can just hit up and shift it below. And I'm just going to distort this and just kind of get it to where everything is and just following the sun. And that's kind of more, more or less there. And what I do is I can just control U. So I bring up the hue saturation menu and I'm just desaturating the whole thing and just making it black and I can just push it down and there we go I'm kind of using these on the right as a measurement so these are looking really good so another thing we need are the contact shadows so the contact shadows are basically just painting what's right around the tires and where everything touches to make it grounded and just look like it's sitting on a ground so I'm just going to go paint into that and there we go and I think but yeah that's looking much better now there are another little thing that, um, that I mean you can just go on forever but with time it's important that you move forward and you can't get stuck up in people just as much as they are important to a scene so another little thing that's important is actually rim light so let's create a new layer down there and just call this rim light. Let's just hit it. I'm sorry if you're hearing all my keystrokes, but this is actually a microphone from my webcam and a new one should be coming any day now. So let's paint our rim light and just put that to soft light in our blending mode. And what this will do is just create this outline shadow that looks quite amazing. There we go. Uh, that's already that's already coming to life look at that just how much life has this motorbike guy just came from so just keep painting and again we have just this off light that's bouncing from the back so that's our bounce light 
You can look into these things. I mean, there are so many tutorials online, but the best thing to do is actually just look at photos and just understand it. And once you start practicing and you start painting, you, you don't really need to, to hear about explanations. I'm sure many artists, after a while, they just, after painting, they just start to see how things follow. And I guess that's with experience. Don't try and overdo it on this one, so don't go too much into the into the whites, it starts to look very plasticky. And I can even like just invert and just paint out some blacks that I find are working better. So generally where everything touches the ground, it gets a little more darker the shadow. And there we go. And he's inserted and he's looking fantastic. I think it's it's so simple, there's nothing much to it, it's just a case of uh, taking your time and following three simple steps, which is just take care with your levels, just color balance it, and just add your rim lights and bounce lights, and that's as simple as that, and of course your shadow. So there's, there's actually not much to it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, first tutorial, and thank you for all your emails and support and for everyone asking for this tutorial. If you do have any requests, uh, I would say just mention them below and let's see what we can do as time progresses and hopefully we can get a few more tips online and start demystifying uh, the whole architectural visualization process. Thank you to all and see you next time.